Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and people. Uh, it's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Everyone's a special guest because they took their time to join me on this podcast. But I'm joined by one of my old school counseling buddies uh, from the GMU School Counseling Program, now a children's book author, which is so remarkable. I'm joined by Ms. Jacqueline Scott Bell. Now, before we get in this episode and, and, and all the wonderful things she's doing, um, can you give the listeners, Jackie, give the listeners a little bit of a, a teaser of who you are, a little, little elevator pitch of who you are? Okay, good evening, everybody. I am a, a professional school counselor as well as a published author, and I also teach a writing boot camp. I am um, a graduate of uh, Roosevelt University. I majored in journalism there. And I'm also a graduate of George Mason University um, with a master's degree in counseling and development. So that's great. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's great. You know, uh, I, I know a little bit about you before. So first of all, that was the first time I heard about your undergrad major. I don't know why I never connected that, but um, I know you worked uh, a lot of times as an airline attendant uh, before going back uh, to school for your master's. So, you know, for the listeners that, that you know, we're, we're going to get into the book and, and also what you're doing now, but I'm uh -huh. always curious, how uh -huh. did you transition from journalism to flight attendant? to school counselor. That's just a remarkable uh, story. Well, actually, Phil, I um, actually left college in my senior year to be a flight attendant. I saw an opportunity to travel and go around the world. And so I actually, um, to the dismay of my parents, <laughs> I left college right before my senior year. And I left and I went to be a flight attendant. And I did that for a while. Then I got married, had kids, wanted to be in the school system with my kids. And so I've always subbed at the school and just been a part of the school community. And I went back to school. I decided to go back and get my master's degree. And initially I was going to be an elementary school teacher, mm -hmm. but I fell in love with school counseling. I fell in love with my children's school counselor. I mean, they had one of the best school counselors. And I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to be a school counselor. And so that's how I met you. And I ended up in the um, school counseling field and I have not looked back. Um, I wanted to, um, you know, I love working with children. And as a school counselor, I developed school counselor guidance lessons. And so how I got to writing the books was um, trying to write something that my kids would understand, the students would understand and they would appreciate. And I wanted them, wanted them to see themselves in the stories. So that's how I kind of got to where I am today. Well, I'm actually, well, I'm actually, well, I see a lot of connections because I see like now that I put it together, you always had this writing media tie, right? Like uh, you were, you now it's real like, wow, you're studying journalism. But yeah, in between yeah. that time, um, was this always just something in the back burner? Like you say, writing, was writing always something you did for fun? Uh, mm -hmm. Growing up, did you write stories as a kid? Like, you know, what's that background in writing? I did. You know what? That was always one of my favorite subjects was reading and writing. So I just loved books. And I have been writing since probably the fourth grade. I used to write poetry and just little stories. And it's just something that I did and it was effortless and I enjoyed doing it. So I've, I have so much stuff that I've written over the years, but I've never published, you know, like poems and uh, songs and just everything. <laughs> so I've, it's always been there, you know, how everyone has a hidden talent yeah. and you just have to find it and pull it out. 
and identify it. And so it's always been there. It's just that I've never gotten to the stage of publishing. What what sparked it? Like what was like the the catalyst to say, okay, now is the time. I mean, was it the pandemic? Like you know, like we're we're like locked in the house. You know? <laughs> yes, like I don't know. Yes. Like what was like yeah, what was the main catalyst? Like you know, what was the catalyst <laughs> to say like this is it? This is the window. This is this this is the space to to really take a writing from a private passion or private habit habit to something that's very public. Well, it was a pandemic. I was sitting outside with my daughter outside on the deck and we were bored. And I'm like, you know, what are we going to do? We can't go outside. There's nothing to do. You know, we're on lockdown. The malls are closed and we really can't go anywhere. And we were sitting outside and she said, mom, now's the time to finish that book that you started. And I actually had written a book about bullying about five years ago. And she said, why don't you finish your books? And so I started writing and I really want, you know, came up with this idea of uh, diversity as you and me. You know, mm -hmm. I said, what is it that my kids, I wanted to write for my students. And I said, what is it that they need to know about? And I work in a school that's very diverse and you have a lot of different personalities and different, a lot of different nationalities. Uh, different races, ethnicities. And so I, I just came, it just came to me. This book, the first book I wrote, Diversity in Me, it just came to me um, as I was sitting out on the deck. <laughs> but um, I wrote that, I finished that one that was released in November. And then I said, you know what, that was so much fun, you know, working with um, an illustrator and uh, developing the story. It was just so much fun that I said, you know what, I want to do another book. And that's when I came up with Bulliana. And um, Bulliana is um, something I was very passionate about, you know, bullying and kids uh, treating each other with respect. And basically, when I wrote this book, I made sure I included um, stories that my, my students could relate to, like how they got along with each other. In the book, um, I made sure I included my friends, my childhood friends, uh, my nieces and my nephews are in here and some of my close friends as children, they're in this book as well. So um, I, I just I just really love writing and um, I've already uh, started a sequel to Bulliana. So that's probably not gonna be released until um, probably the fall. I've got to get with the illustrator and uh, come up with the story and how I want it to be um, laid out. But yeah, but I love writing. I love reading. I love words. I love children's books. And I finally made it here. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, that's wonderful. So like, <laughs> so, you know, obviously for that first, you know, obviously your genre was more like children and, and connecting to your actual school counseling role. Um, where was the, like, you know, the first like, guidance to say okay now that I want to write a children's book here's the boom boom steps like I you know maybe write a storyboard or outline or I need to connect with an illustrator how did you find those steps out how did you connect those dots um in regards to you know taking maybe a rough draft and such and and organizing it with the publishing company like for those that may, maybe don't know anything about this process Okay, what I do is I just write it down as if I'm writing a poem, okay? And I, I start with a vision of what I want it to look like. And I just, like I said, it kind of comes natural for me. It's, not, it's effortless, you know, I can just think of an idea and I write it down and, you know, I rewrite it and I write it and I rewrite it. Um, and so what I did, I wrote it down as if I was writing a poem because it rhymes. I'm not sure if you, you've read it already, but um, it, the story rhymes. And after I wrote the story, then I wrote down detail by detail how I wanted the pictures to look. And then that's when I sent them to the illustrator. I said, can you make this happen? Can you, um, you know, make my vision come true, you know? And so I went back and forth and um, um, Samir was, he was an awesome illustrator. Um, he did exactly what I wanted and he was quick and he was fast. And um, I, it, it was, it was, um, it was pretty an easy, a pretty easy process. 
you know, so um, I enjoy it. Uh, one thing I do do uh, feel is like I'm constantly writing and rewriting and rewriting until I finally say to myself, you know what, this is it. I need to cut it off. I need to stop and just let it go. You know, because sometimes if I if you give it to me, I'll keep rewriting it and I'll keep adding stuff and taking stuff away. Uh, one thing I do uh, right by my nightstand, by my bed, I have a notepad and pencil. And a lot of times I wake up in the morning with thoughts, you know, things that I want to make happen. I'm constantly thinking of how to make the lessons more interesting for the students, you know, how to keep them engaged because I'm competing with video games. Mm -hmm. Um YouTube, you know, you name it, social media. And I want to get kids interested in learning. So I'm constantly thinking about how can I get the kids interested and in wanting to read, you know, and wanting to put the computer down or the cell phone down and pick up a book and read it. And I wanted to make it interesting. So I said, the pictures have really got to, to mm -hmm. be bright and, um, you know, engaging and make the kids want to pick it up and want to find out what's inside. So a lot of this comes from um, my guidance lessons, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trying to supplement the guidance lessons. We're always looking for books you know, to supplement the lessons because the kids love books. They love visuals. Most of them are visual learners. So they want to see. And this one really went over well with them. Bulliana really went over well with them because they want, well, what does she do next? Um, well, you know, what's, well, did you bring Bulliana again? They want to know more about this character that I developed. So um, it was all basically based on a guidance lesson about bullying. Nice. How did you how did you get connected with the illustrator? Like, for you know, like was it like a close friend or someone connected you? How did you know? You know, because that's a one. I'm thinking is that this is a that's probably a really like one two punch. Like you had to build a relationship with someone to say, you know, we're gonna be going back and forth, and you're gonna kind of share my vision and stuff like that. So how did you get connected with with some? I actually found them on the internet. Okay. You know, I googled um, children's book illustrators, and there's a Lots of them, you know, and a lot of them have the pictures that they've done. And I found one in particular. I really like the pictures, you know, so that's how I found them. Um, but I had all of this laid out before I went to the illustrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted it to look like. That's why I went the self-publishing route, because I wanted to control what I was putting out. There. I didn't want anybody to change it because I know what my students like. And... Right. Yeah. And at one school, you know, I know my, 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 my students. So, um, you know, at another school, other kids might like other things, but I have a relationship. I've built a relationship with the students as well as their families. So I kind of know what their needs are and what their expectations are. So I'm very curious. Um, I have like two questions, like my questions are coming out right down in, on my head. But one is that before it was like ready to go, do you like almost have an informal focus group? Like, did you test this out and have your children read it or give you feedback? Like, how do you know, like, you know, I got it, I hit it. Uh, and it was gonna resonate, you know, with, with, with people before it's published. I read it to a couple of my teacher friends and my school counselor friends and my colleagues. And I tested it out on a couple of people and I said, what do you think? Do I need to add something? Because, you know, you always want someone else's opinion to see if it's, you know, it may sound okay to me, but how is this going to go over with someone else? So I did test it out on my children and my good friends and some of my colleagues to see, you know, does this sound like a good story? Is it interesting? Is it something people might want to read, you know, the kids might want to pick up and read, so. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, and then the second question that just popped in my head is, that, you know, curious, that self-publishing route. I know that, mm -hmm. I think that's a new way, not a new way, but that's, I think I've, I've seen this more and more, particularly in the age of the internet, people taking more control of right. books and, and going around, um, you know, I guess these large publishing companies to say, you know, I, I control the words that I put out and stuff like that. Um, for those that are hesitant, you know, you said that this is the route I'm going. Um, what would be like some of the, I guess, pros that you found doing publishing on your own, self-publishing? What was some of the, the pros that you've experienced? Um, and, and if you, you know, to sell this to someone else like that's on the fence about publishing a book. 
Okay. And like you said, you know, um, there are a lot of publishing companies out there and uh, book agents and people. And, you know, you got to kind of sell yourself to them. Um, I was at a conference um, about a year ago and I met one of my favorite children's authors. She writes a lot of books about classroom guidance. And I am just like a big fan of her book. Her name is Julia Cook. And I had a conversation with her. And, um, you know, she had given me some tips and pointers, you know, but she works with a big publishing company. Um, I decided to go the self-publishing route because I could control what I'm saying, um, who I'm saying it to, and there's no one telling me no. You know, there's no one making me feel bad that, you know, or making me feel as if my story is not worthy of being told. So um, I just, you know, I found a self, I, I Googled a lot of them. I've read uh, about a lot of different companies. I contacted different companies and I settled upon um, one in particular that has an affiliation with Amazon. And, um, you know, they were able to get my book out. Um, I do all the the advertising for it, you know. Um, they, they do offer advertising packages, but I felt it was, you know, best for me to go out and market to market it myself, you know. So what ways, I mean, yeah, for that now, that, that leads into my question then. So now that you have to be your biggest advocate and you're now you're not only an author, now you're, you're, you're a, a marketing, right. you know, marketing exec, you know, and all those different things. <laughs> so put on your, put it on, on, put it on your marketing exec hat. How have been some ways that you promoted your book and, and really, you know, getting yourself out there. And also my second part is what challenges have you had getting your book out there as a, a team of one, you know, for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thanks to my daughter. She's like a marketing genius, you know, um, she knows all about TikTok and uh, <laughs> Instagram, you know, things that I probably would not even do have, have done in the past, but Instagram has been a big one. Um, and I was able to collect, connect with a lot of other authors just on Instagram. You know, there's so many other people out there, Philip, that want to be authors and they like to promote each other's books. So um, the school counselors have been promoting it um, because it's basically written for them. <laughs> uh, teachers, um, some of the organizations that I belong to, but my biggest um, promoter has been Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, so using then, social media. Wow. Social media. And then I did like a billboard, a blip board in certain um, cities. You know, I picked 10 different cities and I ran a blip board um, last week. And I found out all this through my daughter. My daughter <laughs> knows all about how to market things. And so um, I've done that. Um, word of mouth. Um, yeah, but the biggest, uh, most of the, um, most of the marketing has been through Instagram, TikTok, and um, Facebook. That's wonderful. And That's... you can buy ads, you know, you can buy Facebook ads. I set up an author's page. So um, I, I get a lot of, um, you know, um, leads through the author's page, um, you know, just sharing it and um, asking my friends to share it. So, yeah. Well, you did. That's worked. Mm -hmm. You did bring up to a community, like, um, and you said earlier, you write, you do writing boot camps. Can you speak to that, like meeting other authors and building that community um, that you said you built over mm -hmm. over time? How, yeah, talk, talk about how you found this community and how it's fostered you and how you really connect with other people uh, in this this space of writing. Okay. Well, the writing boot camp is actually. Um, it's with a school district that I work with. They teach, a, they have an adult education division. And um, I was featured actually in our newsletter for our county, our, our you know, school district. I, they did an article about my books. And so, so many people saw it and um, people I hadn't heard from in a long time. And one of the ladies I had taught adult education for about eight years ago, she saw it and she said, you know, I really need someone to teach writing boot camp. Would you be interested in doing that? And I said, oh, sure. You know, I love writing and it's fun for me. So I um, have some adults and it's just um, at nighttime, you know, from six to nine. It's a 
adult education class. And for it's for adults that want to learn how to write. So I've been having a lot of fun with that too. I love it. So look, like, tell us a little bit of those stories. You know, like, are these just people from all walks of life? And yeah, are, are they, what, what do they want to, when they come to this, are they trying to write to learn how to write? Like, uh, I don't know, just personal or they want to write poetry and creative writing. What kind of, what kind of writing is the focus of these boot camps for adults? Well, most of it is in ESOL, English yeah. speaking. Speakers, uh, speakers of other languages, and they're coming here trying to learn how to write, you know, um, they're coming to the class to learn how to write in English, you know, because it's different. Um, most of my students do speak another language, and so they want to know how to write essays so that they can apply to college. So it's basically, wow. you know, and that's right up my alley, writing, writing. Yeah. We did a lot of writing in graduate school, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because it's also like, I don't know, it's that day counselor hat, it's like really tied to the holistic career part too, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it I, don't is. Know, I, I just heard it. You said that these are people trying to use words to change their lives in regards mm -hmm. to their career outcomes, you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I, I want to get into college. So it, it's just so interesting that you're using your gifts yeah. in this, like, this helping space, another, <laughs> another helping space. Like you, you're using, right. Like you're not writing, like you're not writing Zane books and, uh, you know, you know, no. Was it, no, was it the great, you know, was that was the great, I don't know, the shades of gray kind of books. Let's see shades of gray and all that. No, <laughs> no but you're writing books that tie. I, I don't know. I'm just, what's making me happy is just that you're, you're using your gifts of writing and another form of helping. You know, I think, we became, we're in the counseling program. We all have different aspects, but you're using it in like regards to anti-bullying and also diversity, which is super important for young children. Mm -hmm. But then also right. you're using writing to help in a career space. So I think that's just so crazy that your, your gift of writing is showing up in different spaces. So and you know what, Phil? I didn't even think of it like that. It just kind of happened, but I am helping with careers because um, some of the students have said they want promotions and in order to get promotions, they need to know how to write. Mm -hmm. And so I'm teaching them how to write and, and, and that is the career readiness. That is a part mm -hmm. of the, um, if you remember the Ask a National Model. Yeah. It's career. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, just, I was just reviewing NACE and there was like, you know, cultural competence, digital yes. literacy. But at the very root of it, regardless, no matter how far technology changes, is oral and written communication. Are you able to communicate via calls and words, but also with employers writing emails or written correspondence? So it's just, it is integral that reading and writing at the very fundamental level, you know, as a kid, I ain't gonna lie though, when I was a kid, I was like, man, I don't need to know how to do calculus. <laughs> but I, you know, but there's something very basic to like learn how to read and write. Yeah, yeah, it'll take you a long way. It really will. Mm -hmm. Very and long so way. I'm just helping adults brush up on writing skills and learning how to formulate an essay yeah. in the correct way. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is what has been one of the most surprising or you know most random outcomes of this journey of writing children's books, like something that just popped up out of left field whether it's another person that reconnected with you or maybe a new skill that you never knew you had, you learned. What has it been like during this journey of writing children's book, what has surprised you about, you know, for you? Um, I, well, I have been able to connect with people. You know, when I did put it out there on Facebook and I did the Facebook ad and all, so many people I had not heard from in years, Phil, um, contacted me and said, I'm gonna buy the book, I wanna read it. I'm going to buy it for my kids. Oh, I'm buying several copies of it. You know, and they were so, it was so much love. You know, it was like, they were so happy, you know, to hear from me and, you know, to see this because a lot of people didn't know that I wrote, you know, I just never talked a whole lot about it, but it's just been like one of my first loves. Um, I enjoy it and it's effortless and I do it because I want to do it. I do it out of the love for, for writing and words and books and, and so I was able to connect with a lot of my old friends and, um, you know, just to get out there and, um, you know, see how my students took to this. They really enjoyed this story. And they were, you know, you can always tell when the kids like something because they're laughing and they want more. It's like, is that it? Well, um, we want to know what she's doing now or what's going to happen to her, you know? So they really 
really like the Bulliana story. And I was glad that was my goal was to get their attention and let them kind of, you know, see themselves in a story. Yeah, I love and it. a lot of the things that are in this story are things that they deal with every day. I love it. I mean, one of the things mm -hmm. that really stuck out, you know, shout out, like, shout out to Amazon. I just purchased your book, so I can't. Thank so you. I, I got, well, actually, I, <laughs> I would have sent, I would have sent you the it's book. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. I purchased it to support you, but I also bought Thank both you, of them. I bought, I bought the diversity one because that's super important to me. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely did not just realize that you did have a diversity book in, in addition to Bulliana. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just going back to our counseling program and just in general, I think that discussions about race is super integral. Um, I saw a meme like, you know, white, black, we need to talk about it as kids. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a, I know there's been some counter arguments like, oh, this, we're, they're too young to talk about race. Um, and I'm like, no, like, especially if they're a young black child, they're gonna wake up in the world, you know, and they, they're gonna, the world's gonna teach them about race. So why not me and my mm -hmm. home have these discussions? So for that as a school counselor and someone that is a, a trained professional working with children, what are, what are your thoughts about inter, introducing the topics about race to children in, in, in regards to age appropriateness? And, you know, definitely you wrote a book about it. You know, how did you develop a, a, a discussion about race to connect with children. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted um, to do, Phil, with this book is I wanted to teach kids how to respect differences. And one of the objectives that I teach in the curriculum is respecting diverse differences. So I wanted the kids to read this book. And what I want, the takeaway was to understand that, hey, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, where you come from, how you sound, you all play a role in making up this world. And you all bring something to this world and that you all matter. And what I thought about as I was writing this, I don't know if you remember Dr. Kaffenberger, but yes. Dr. Ka remember yeah. Dr. Kaffenberger? Yes, I do, yeah. She gave us an article to read one time about mattering. I'm not sure if you remember that, but it was no. about, it was a research study. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, I saved I, it. Yeah, can we pause, pause right here? Like Jackie, you was an all-star student. Uh, like I remember you people, you were probably one of the people that came to classes. Like I read the art, this, this, and I was like, thank God I'm not going to talk in this class. <laughs> but you was an all-star. I, I just knew, you know, there are certain people that I knew in Calcium uh, that were probably coming back to school uh, uh -huh. I'm glad I was, you know, the age I was, but I knew that, <laughs> I don't know, I, there were some all-stars. I, I would not consider myself an all-star grad student at all. Uh, but, but I think we all were with the effort that we put into that program. I think we all had that in us, but I'll never forget this article because I mm. saved it. It was one of the um, journals that we had to read and it was about mattering mm. and how the kids, if they they felt they mattered, then they did much better as academically in school. Everybody wants to feel important. And we know that we see that with the social media. So I wanted with this book to teach kids that, hey, no matter who you are, you play a role. You are important to this world and you play a role in making up the world, you know, whether it's the color of your skin, how you talk, how you act, how you think. You know, we're all different. And that's what diversity is all about. It's about being different, different and respecting each other's differences, no matter where we come from. But it's never too early. I mean, we teach this as early as kindergarten, you know, to mm -hmm. respect diverse differences because we all look the same, you know. I mean, we don't look the same, I should say. Um, and the world would be a very boring place if we did, you know, if we all thought the same. So everybody bring something to the table, whether it's something big or whether it's something small. You are all important. And that's what I was trying to convey with this, with diversity is you, diversity is me, because we're all diverse. Mm -hmm. I know, I, but I, it's I, never too early to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one of my things is, why? I mean, just curious, why do you think some people combat that or have this fear of talking about these things early on? Um, I don't think, I think it's good that we do talk about these things, but I was just mm -hmm. curious, like your thoughts, like maybe 
I, I don't know with this book where maybe any, did you get any pushback about this topic or maybe we're we're really blessed and we didn't you know um, <laughs> I, I don't know because I'm thinking about this book and the other one um anti-racist baby by Dr. Mm-hmm. Kendi X mm-hmm. he, but he's also gotten pushback about his oh yeah about well, definitely I got a lot of pushback. I got a lot of negative. I had to get my daughter to um, go on the internet and turn off those comments because there was a lot of, um, you know, negative things said about it. And I looked at it like, okay, where are you coming from that you feel this way? And it's ignorance, you know, it's people not understanding, people not taking time to understand. But I got an awful lot of pushback because people don't know even know what diversity means a lot of people don't even know what that means and what that all that means is different differences and i wanted people kids kids want to get to kids this book was written for kids but a lot of the pushback came from adults you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. you know i was accused of force trying to force something on someone and it's like if you if you go look up what diversity is, it'll tell you it's just difference. And we're all different. Whether we come from the same family or not, you know, there are differences within family, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, but I did. And, you know, I kind of laughed at it. Bill. I couldn't get upset, you know, because I'm trying to teach a lesson here and I'm trying to get people to understand that, you know, diversity means difference. It doesn't mean taking away anything from anybody, you yeah. know, it doesn't mean that. It means we're all different. Even if we do come from, from the same families, you know, we're different, you know, brothers and sisters, diversity, you know. I just thought about that too, like that is, or yeah. not, there's, there's diversity within uh, races, like no yeah. one's monolithic. There's diversity within right. black people. There's diversity yeah. within yeah. Yes. Latin, the Latinx community. There's, yeah. there's LBGTQ, there's diversity mm-hmm. within like. Yes. And, 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 so, and I think, some of the pushback uh, uh, with that is that you're right. There's some like, like, I guess it, there's this fear of this indoctrination. Like yeah, you're, gonna, yeah. in, you're indoctrinating my kids with this, this, yeah. this you know, th- these, th- these terms and all that. When I think it's like early education, because I, I don't think in regards to the opposite, I feel like it is fearful to say we are all the same. Mm-hmm. And and you know we don't acknowledge differences. I, I don't see the differences in people. I don't, I'm colorblind, and right. I think there's harm in that. But yeah. then there's nothing wrong with acknowledging differences as long as we celebrate it, as you said, right. celebrate. Or mm-hmm. the key word is mattering, mm-hmm. as opposed mm-hmm. to like you know using differences to um, to put others down. That's that's not diversity. That's wrong, right? But acknowledging that people are different is not wrong. Right, right. I think, I think that's the first part for celebration, right? Like, if right. I really, if I really want to see you, Jackie, I acknowledge your differences, and I say I like your differences. I mm-hmm. like your your uniqueness or what you bring to the table or bring to life. So I don't know. That's just my caveat when I'm thinking about this because I was thinking about that the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly, I just got this book. I can't wait to read it with my son Bennett. Oh, let me know what you think of it. Yes. yes. No, I mean, we're, we're talking about it early. Like, we have yeah. Not shot yeah. I think what's been really helpful to have these discussions um, going back to our counseling program is just, I think over time, I've started to develop that mm-hmm. avoiding hard topics, or right. uncomfortable topics, or just different topics. If you keep on putting them away, it, it's going to be a harder conversation. Right. So I'm already trying to get ahead as a father. Mm-hmm. Get ahead of it. Like get ahead of the topics. Like, right. you, know, like you, know, you know, everyone's different, or you know, some people have two mommies and two dads. You know, like right, daddies, right. Like you know, just I'm trying to talk about diversity and all that stuff now. So uh-huh. that, like, I want to lower the shock. <laughs> like, right, like, right, you know, right. Because like, you know, like, the world is not the same. Like he's gonna leave this bubble of my home. Oh, the comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I tell my kids they're experiencing that now, you know, yeah, yeah. moving away from home and just um, interacting with people from different families and having mm-hmm. roommates and, you mm-hmm. know, all of that, that's all new to them. So, you know, they have to learn to respect differences and, um, mm-hmm. you know, respect diversity. Mm-hmm. And, but one of my favorite parts of this book, um, Diversity You and Me, is when I said everyone benefits from worldwide contributions, you know, 
and what I wanted kids to understand is that, hey, some people are good at math, some people are good at science, some people are good, but we all come together and put that together to make it work, you know? So um, that's what I really want them to understand that, hey, we learn from each other, you know? Um, when we talk to other people, we get to know other people. I learn something from everybody I meet, no matter who they are. It might be something big, something small, but I learn something from just about everybody I come into contact with, you know. Yeah. And you know, life is a, a series of lessons, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, some people are acing those lessons. <laughs> some, people, <laughs> some people are struggling, uh, but yeah, there, there, there's yeah. lessons. There are definitely gems right, in every day. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> I think one more question uh, to get off um, in, in regarding this journey of writing, what you think, what is next, you know, for you, um, whether it's next in regards to books or a different form of media, or just, I don't know, like what, like what is next for you be, and, and maybe tied into this book, like what has came out of you? Like, okay, wow. Like now I'm gonna go talk and do public speaking or something. I don't know what's next. What, what's, what has this book spark or books have sparked for you um, as next for you? I really would love to, um, you know, write a couple of sequels to this book, you know, and I really want to focus on the whole bully issue because Bulliana, she was a bully, but then she kind of turns into, it takes a turn and turns into, you know, someone else, you know, toward the end of the book. I'm not gonna give it all away to you, but um, you know, she wants to help the other people. And um, I want to, I know that is a big issue with kids. And so I did um, create the bullyanna.com, you know, the website and um, I trademarked the name so that, um, you know, we're gonna do, my daughter and I are working on some things with this, like my son's trying to put together like an animated series, you know, so that, um, you know, we can, uh, you know, do something positive with this, something positive will come out of this, you know, but my goal, Phil, at the end of the day is to teach lessons and teach kids how to be good people because there's so much wrong stuff out there you know mm -hmm. things that want to take our kids in one direction and I'm trying to pull you over on the other side and say hey it's okay to be nice it's okay to be kind you know and it's okay to be respectful and I want to show kids what it looks like not just tell you but actually show you what it looks like and that's one of the main things I wanted to um, do with the book is to show kids you know, not just tell you, but I'm going to show you what it and show you how to. And that's what Bulliana does in the book. You know, she shows people how to do stuff the right way. So we've got a lot, a lot in store. I don't know where it's going to take us, but, you know, I've become very passionate about this. I love writing and I'm going to continue to write. I'm going to continue to educate kids and teach kids to do the right things, you know, and be good, have good character. And as you notice, they're character education books. That's what, what I want to do with this. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So I lied. That was the last question. Uh, so this is the part of the show called Shot for Shot. So you get to ask me any random question. I get to ask you any random question, not even related to this or not. Do you want to go okay. first or I go first? Okay. Okay. Um, you go first. <laughs> All right. So this is totally random. Um, sure. In regards to your flight attendant days. Mm -hmm. or just traveling the world what is one of the favorite places you visited during your travels and it was like wow this is just so dope I never thought I'd be here and and if and you would want to go back again you know what I'm saying what are your favorite places I've got two actually okay yeah <laughs> but I love Maui Okay, I remember place. going there and staying there for about 10 days. I love that place. And I've gone over there, oh my goodness, at least six times. Um, St. Kitts, we used to go to every year. That was one of my favorite places because it's just quiet and peaceful and, you know, nobody's there. So I like a nice, quiet vacation. Um, but those are two of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that, that, that might be your writing solace. That might be your, yeah, your spot. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's your spot where you uh, 
you you get a second home or so I don't know escape. That sounds <laughs> right I, there I, by the beach. Yeah. yeah, I read a book about this guy. It was called Quitting America or something, and he left. Uh-huh. And he was a black gentleman. I can't remember his name, but now the book. Uh-huh. And that's where he went. He left America and moved to St. Kitts. Really? Yeah, I, I gotta find wow. it. I'll send it to you in a text when I find. Yeah, it. do that for me. I remember, but it was a book uh-huh. I remember, uh-huh. and he was le- legit. Like he he wrote about the differences of living in America than moving to St. Kitts and. How I guess even the police don't have guns, you know they don't mm-hmm. need guns. It's, it, it was a totally different vibe, and I'm really? like, that's the only thing I've ever thought about when I thought of the word Saint Kitts. Really? Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I love that place, and my kids love it. We used to go there at least once a year. You know, it was just a place to go to and just relax, and you know, it was peaceful, it was quiet, and and that's what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. All right. So, okay. what's your question for me? question for you is when are we gonna um get a book from you you have any plans on writing uh, I, okay so I, you know uh, i'll have to share with you in the chat um i like to write articles i've been writing more okay I, i'll actually i wrote a lot of articles about like you know um positivity or well-being for black men and i don't think that's my niche right you know just mm-hmm. uh short form but i i don't know i've never the not say intimidation, but like articles are real quick. You know, it's almost like mm-hmm. sometimes I can like uh, do talk to text and then go mm-hmm. back and edit it. Um, oh. You know, like, you know, just get my thoughts out like you do. You know, I have a, I have a notebook full of random scratches and thoughts or Google. I sometimes do random articles on my phone. Like I'll, I'll start the articles on my phone, not Google Doc on my phone and then take it to the computer. And it's real quick. Uh, so I, I got the practice for real quick stuff, but I have never, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I would like to write a longer book, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, I've never, I've kind of intimidated to write something more than 20 pages, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I think that's the longest paper I wrote was in grad school was, no, in grad school, well, that 20 page paper, right, I had two in my life, I think that's it, I've only written two 20 page papers in my life, one time in undergrad was a history paper research uh-huh. paper is 20 pages and one time right in grad school and I was like I don't know it's like how do people I've always been fascinated about long authors like how do they write like 10 you know I don't know thousand page books like you know J.R. Token like how does that dude or you know the guy that did um uh not Lord of the, that's J.R. Token but um Martin George Martin whatever the one that did Game of Thrones uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, volumes. Like, how do you write volumes? I just can't imagine. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. And then, and then I, I'd see the average. The average for, like, a, you know, self-help book. or It's still about 200 pages, maybe. 150 yeah, to 200 yeah. pages. So, I'm saying all that to say I, I want to do it someday. I just, uh-huh. I, I don't know. Maybe I have to create a system or take the articles, short ones, and put them together as chapters. I don't know. <laughs> like, but... I, I enjoy writing. I enjoy writing short stuff. I really do. Like, it's been easy to write a thousand words or fifteen hundred words, but that's short. It's like yeah. a sprint. It's like a sprint. I'm a sprinter. I was. A, I was a track star. I was a. I was a sprinter. I wasn't a long distance person. I was a sprinter. Get it over with. You know. Get it done. Um, so, but um, that's you, good. But that I was about to say, seeing you do it has inspired me. I, I've seen more and more people explore their creativity i like to you know, yeah this, this podcast is one form but I, I am there is something to be said about um writing it's it's very it's fun um it is mm-hmm. i don't like the grammar part but i like getting my ideas <laughs> out. <laughs> that's what i just learned this too i learned this writing and editing is separate so you could be a great writer and just yes. a, and just hire an editor. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so easy now with it. You know, when you, you're typing, it um, corrects itself a lot of times. So yeah, yeah, that's cheating. I tell my kids that's cheating. You know. <laughs> hey, I found that down. This dude was like, "Yeah, man, Phil, it's easy to write. You know, I wrote a book, but I got a team of editors. They send it back to me." I was like, "Wow, like I never thought of that. Like people got teams and and yeah, back and yeah. forth, but." Um, but I we know. need um for our young black men we need um authors to tell the male's point of view you know because with bully and i'm talking from a female's perspective so we do need your perspective I don't know, I, your- 
I don't know about the Chargers, but hey, there's another episode. I'm going to I'm gonna send you the link to that. There's my boy, Justin Bell. Well, I'm going to send this uh-huh. to him too. My boy, okay. Justin Bell, he said that's one of his creative endeavors one day. So now uh-huh. I put it now. I got someone to pass off. I got someone to pass this challenge to. <laughs> but my boy, Justin Bell, black male, awesome dad, everything. He said he's going to mm-hmm. write a children's book. So now I bother him and say, how's that book coming along? Because I'm going to send this to him about the, and maybe connect you with Justin as well. Yeah, um, please. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I said, I, I think it's great. I see people like you that have multi, they're multi-talented. They have nine to fives, um, like real <laughs> nine to fives and pursue other endeavors like this. It's very motivational to all the other people out there to say, you know, you can do it too. You can be a mom, you can be a school counselor and you can be an author. And I think that yeah, now you put me, you put the, the gauntlet <laughs> on me, the little challenge. I don't know if it's going to be a children's book, but it's going to be some more writing. I love to write. So thank you for challenging me, but I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. So that's great. That is wonderful because we need that. We do, especially our young men, you know, young kids in school. We want to get them interested in reading, you know, Yeah. and more interested take them a little away from the video games you can play the video games but come over here and read too you know yeah yeah that's true i think one of the things i also think is someone told me the other way other thing is that there's powers in words right and one of the last thing they said was that words are like bullets in a sense that use them sparingly but also realize that it's a tool that you can use for good and for harm right like like a bullet you can use a bullet to hunt deer and you know, eat, but also you can use Mm -hmm. words to create harm and hurt someone. So when you're crafting this stuff, it's like, that's, it gives you power. Like Mm -hmm. almost one guy was like, you know, when I feel like someone's, you know, coming on me, I'm arming myself with the tools of my words. That is is my weapon. I weaponize my, I weaponize my words in a good way. Um, And so I found some power in that. I found some power in taking control of certain narratives through words, through writing. It's, it is a very powerful thing. It is. Uh, it to is. find a voice in that way. Yes, I love it. And, uh, you know, it's an outlet and it's just, it allows me to think, you know, and I love thinking and creating and creating different, um, you know, things for the kids to do and trying to get them, you know, just keep them engaged and keep them interested in learning. Mm-hmm. So... so- this has been a wonderful episode. I'm so happy you joined us. Uh, and the <laughs> listeners will take a lot away from it. Definitely get the book, uh, Diversity is You and Me and Bulliana. Both of those books uh, will be in the show notes for purchase. Already got my copy. Can't wait to share it with Bennett. He actually is good at reading at, for a kindergartner. So I might challenge him to see if he can read some of the words on the page on his own. <laughs> but this is, the, this is the part of the show, um, all floor is yours, called Shout Outs and Plugs. So feel free to show love, shout out anyone you want to show love to, anyone. And then plugs, which I will write down in the show notes so that anyone that wants to follow up with you or get connected with you or see what you're doing, I'll make sure to put those those race, those race resources in the notes. So stage is set, everything that you want to share, shout outs and plugs. All righty. Well, first and foremost, I want to shout out to my daughter, Jasmine Bell, because if it wasn't for Jasmine, this book probably never would have come into fruition. Uh, Jasmine, she challenged me to go out here and write this and complete my stories and tell my stories. And she helped me promote this. You know, she told me what's out there, how you promote things. So I want to give a shout out to Jasmine Bell, Jalen Bell for telling me how to navigate the internet. My son, both of my student, my, my son and daughter are college students, Jasmine's at BSU, Jalen's at Virginia State. And, um, you know, they can work that social media. So I want to shout out to them. My best friend, Barbara Anderson, I love her, been my best friend since we were 14 years old. And she's another one of my big supporters. Um, 
I'd also like to shout out my brother, Andre, who um, I do mention, I dedicate Bulliana to because he taught me how to be fearless and not to be afraid of anything. And he always said, you know what? Once you get your education, nobody can ever take that away from you. And that's why I kept on going. And I went on and got the master's and completed that program because I just hear those words in my head that he told me a long, long time ago. So I had to dedicate this book to him. And I want to um, just say thank you to everyone who supported me, who went out and purchased the book. And if you haven't already, this is a great story. I put a lot of energy into writing about it, and I'm sure you all enjoy it. Um, it can be purchased at Amazon, or you can go to bulliana.com or Instagram um, at Jackie the Author on Instagram. I love it. And I'll spell that out, Jackie the Author. Put that in your show notes. Definitely been a pleasure. Uh, you know, I think one of the things, as you said, the, 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 the connections of this podcast is this has also allowed me to reconnect with you. Yes. See you after a while. <laughs> uh, the, the counseling program really does hold a special place because I got to meet so many wonderful people. And I think the underlying part about the wonderful people is that they wanted to help. <laughs> like, at bare minimum, <laughs> I mean, hopefully, ideally, if you want to go into counseling, whether it was school counseling or the other, that the, the, at the core of you was a helper. So I was, uh -huh. I was surrounding myself with a bunch of helpers. Uh, <laughs> uh, not to unbeknownst to me that we'd be connected in different ways or see right. all the different um, ways that everyone is helping in the schools or in the community or with you know mental health all the different aspects of helping but this has been wonderful this has been a great way to reconnect uh whether through this podcast and through your book and uh it's just been a pleasure i'm just really smiling you see i'm smiling a lot i'm really enjoying re reconnecting with you and i'm really i'm really interested now i'm really interested to read this book uh, uh, <laughs> so and I'll, I'll, you know, definitely share it. I'll put it on Instagram and all that too, but. Um, oh, please do. Let me know what you think, Phil. Just let me know. And I think what you will see, because you know counseling, you'll see that multicultural counseling show up in these books, yeah. in both of these books. You will see that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, you know, that's something that was stressed that was important that our, our program was all about. Uh-huh. So you'll see that come out in both of these books so i'm using that stuff that we learned <laughs> yes i am too it's very interesting how it shows it shows up in yes. different spaces but thank you so much jackie um thank for you for having me i appreciate it yes <laughs> so for those that are listening please 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 check out jackie's book uh bulliana and diversity is you and me definitely all of all the links in the show notes if you enjoyed this episode please share it with a family member or friend the more and more sharing these episodes is how we get out and how we connect and how we make a difference. Uh, if you also want to leave a voicemail for the podcast, it's 571-336-6560. That's 571-336-6560. Sharing positivity is a movement. Thank you for listening. And we're out. Thank, Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, spreading positivity of movement. Thanks for listening.